chicken. Hello, Specky Bams. My name is Keech TV. Welcome back to another Man Child Review. And today we are looking at something pretty exceptional, I'd say. Uh, I probably say that every episode, but this one, um, this one's got a, a bit of context to it, I'd say. This is uh, the special bump of chicken Sonic Blue Bumblebee. I hope, oh, right, it's right there. I memorized that. Uh, no, it's right there with exosuit chama. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I thought, um, oh, all this is in Japanese, so I need to remember uh, what I was reading up about. So I know what I'm talking about for this episode. But uh, it's that thing where the Japanese do like the big kind of bold capital letters English next to the actual Japanese. You can see it there, bump of chicken. Uh, I wish I knew what this said. I don't. I got a pal who speaks a little bit of Japanese, but. Uh, I pester him too much. I always go, do you know what this is? And he, he's like, oh, but kind of, I guess. I should probably stop pestering him with all these weird toys I find on eBay. But uh, still, this is, uh, as you might see here, a nice baby blue bumblebee with a uh, bump of chicken in his arms and a wee guy with him. And you might think, Keej, what the fuck is this, man? What, 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 what you're just throwing anything at the Man Child Reviews now. And to that I say, shut the fuck up, we're going to learn something. This is, uh, prior to what I thought, right, when I first heard of this toy, I thought Bumper Chicken was like a fast food chain or something, because uh, I'm a fat bastard like that. But no, uh, Bumper Chicken is a Japanese band, they're pretty famous, uh, I'll be real with you, right? Like the uncultured fart I am, I had never heard of them until, uh, you know, Transformers did something with them. And they're even more so relevant now because we've just came off there, the um, Studio Trigger special promotional video that they animated for the 40th anniversary, kind of coinciding with Transformers 1 there. It's all kind of popping off now and I thought, you know, I got this a couple of months back, uh, I've been saving it for a Manchester review, saving it for a really day, and I thought this was the perfect timing because... Um, I want to talk about the kind of stuff like that, but a lot of the time I don't really have an avenue. I don't really give a shit about, you know, gassing things up on Twitter. Um, if I made a video about it, I don't think I would have too much to say. I don't really feel like I should uh, have any, you know, time of the day review and shit like that. But um, in a little man show review, you know, I can open up a toy. I can talk about it. I can have a little something to say there. I really like um, these little kind of small Japanese boxes, by the way. This, this was 2017, I think. Yeah, 35th anniversary of Transformers. God, <laughs> time flies by, isn't it? Now we're in the 40th. I like these kind of little um, Takara Legends boxes they were doing for like Titans Return and uh, Power of the Primes and stuff like that. It was a nice kind of like, they were all compact. They came with little Titan Masters. They had beautiful colours. Uh, and I like this, you know, with the, the magenta in the background, the kind of sound waves. This is just a beautiful little bit of graphic design I'm holding. And I'm noticing now, right? That uh, the baby blue nature of this little guy is going to contrast against the blue background. So, just give me a wee second. I'm just going to... Okay. Um, hopefully the landlord isn't too upset for me for doing that. Uh, I don't want to keep my security deposit. Aye. Uh, let's just get this open since I've done that now. Uh, I wish I could read the Japanese. I'm sorry, I'm monolingual. Okay. This has been... You know, like I always say, with this usual stick, this box has been sealed for so and so many years, which is kind of weird to open up. Crazy how I found it for a good price sealed. Uh, all right. Again, I have no clue what that says. How are we feeling about this background, by the way? Maybe I should keep it for future episodes? I don't know. I think I was maybe getting a little bit bored of the baby blue. Wow. <laughs> That's really nice in person, actually. Uh, there's instructions there. I think this comes with a little comic that... Um, uh, I should probably actually explain Chama here as the bassist for Bump of Chicken, the band. And uh, for this video, I, 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 um, I thought, you know what, I've seen the Studio Trigger video, which I think I'll talk about in a wee minute. Uh, I, I, you know, I heard that track that they did for it. I feel like yeah, I should give this stuff a little listen. I um, I did a, maybe just a wee, a wee small dive into their discography. Uh, I, I saw that new thing they made, Strawberry, I gave it a listen to that. Um, uh, I saw it, uh, a few of the kind of semi-recent stuff, you know, just from across the past few years. Uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was a lot more kind of calm and nice than I was expecting. So I think sometimes I mean, when you think about these bands who do a lot of animation kind of work, it's going to be, you know, like that old kind of Pokemon music video there. Uh, someone that I can't remember who did it. Might maybe the same guys. It's probably not, but it's like a lot of it. It's like crazy. I don't know what's going on here, by the way. It's crazy exciting, like, to kind of match how all over the place and, like, mental the animation is. It's, like, um, 
it's big and bombastic, but no, I was pretty chill, it was um, pretty relaxed, it was just a nice kind of groove to it, and uh, I think a guy who's a bit of a boomer when it comes to music like me, very much enjoyed that, uh, again, more stuff I just do not know what the fuck it means, uh, here's the comic, yeah, there's, there's the Chama guy there, and I think he wrote this, I don't know why, I don't know how, there's, uh, there's Mauji one there, uh, there's the band, it just... Somehow it was like uh, he he or the band or whatever just like hey do you want to do something with Transformers okay and uh, that this just happened then we just have like a blue bumblebee with the band in his arms which it's pretty cool if you ask me uh, apparently they sold it very quick as well so this was like a crossover that people were looking forward to in Japan which <laughs> would have surprised me you know um. I suppose over here in the kind of Europe Western Hemisphere, it's like uh, a lot of these crossovers. You're cynical to them these days, you know. Um, these kind of like uh, money things where it's just like, oh, let's smash as many IPs together to get as much of an audience. But uh, I think it's a, it's a little more I don't know honest over there. Where it's just like I want to make a story about Transformers. Maybe maybe I'm being one of those weirdos who kind of idealizes it, just you know, place Japan. But uh, it sounds a little more creatively sincere if you ask me, I don't know. Uh, again, I, I don't even speak the language this box is written in, so I could be wrong. We're getting into the actual toy here. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Like the little transparent plastic windows. Is it focusing? Fuck you, focus. This is a really cool op mode. That is, uh, that's very nice. I feel like this Bumblebee's very much slept on in terms of like uh, how nice it is as a toy, you know, how it kind of gets swept aside as soon as uh, the... Netflix War of Cybertron and the Studio Series one came out, uh, as well as for customs. I feel like this is a very versatile mold because I know I know you're the same, right? You're one of those people who sees a new toy and they don't appreciate what's in front of them. They just think, oh, this could make for a good glyph. This could make good for a uh, a good. What's I'm tripping over myself. What's his name? Uh, Throttlebot Freeway. One of those guys, right? And I, I can't I can't blame you, right? I'm the same. I kind of got this just because. It would make a cool glyph, like, oh, glyph is a bump of chicken fan. And here she is with a nice light blue colour scheme because there's no way in hell I'm going to pay that much for a botcon keychain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that, for all intents and purposes, this is Bumblebee. It's just Bumblebee hanging out with a little cool, surprisingly loose, uh, Jeez, I can't tell if this is like the first run or the second run. Apparently, it sold out so quick they did like a second run. Can't tell if it's like maybe the first run had like maybe weaker legs or whatever. Uh, still pretty cool. I love how much he pops out against the uh, the magenta here. That was definitely a good choice in the box and in person. Looks very very nice. Just a very clean blue uh, that makes the logo stand out. Just shows you how nice this mold is. Like it's just. A little kind of boxy, silly bumblebee who resembles the G1 toy quite a bit. Uh, Chama here. This is a really nice head as well, actually. Like, look at that. I get some, like, kind of old school, like, Emirate Zaron Prime kind of vibes. That's it. Uh, it's just a, like a cool sci fi Transformers dude head. Um, face is transparent plastic, which I think is supposed to be like a space helmet or something, if you can see that. <laughs> it's it's kind of haunting, actually. But no, I, I love a little rare Titan Master guy. Those are really cool, like a little um, headmaster who doesn't really fit into the kind of typical niche of what you'd expect from that kind of 2017 and onward, I guess, because they're, they're still doing Titan Masters, aren't they? Like, a lot of the uh, Prime War stuff, as much as people like to brush it away, uh, can you tell I'm salty? A lot, a lot of the stuff, uh, it still lives on. There was a lot of kind of engineering stuff that they realised, like, was a pretty good feat. I just realised I left my scissors in the shop for like a minute there. No, um, a lot of that stuff, the Combiner Cog stuff, the uh, Titan Masters, I think Omega Prime has a Titan Master of Cerebros, like the big HasLab one, still with it, which uh, is pretty crazy to me that all this stuff is like still about and it's not just like thrown away for the sake of a new gimmick uh, after like a couple of years, which it puts a grin in my little uh, Prime Wars fanboy face. Yeah, these are these are quite swag and... I think it's funny looking at um, such a nice coherent kind of deco as this compared to the new one where it's um, the Airfryze Optimus Prime and like each colour in him represents like uh, a member of Bumper Chicken. and he's like, he, he's like the ultimate like neon kind of play school Optimus Prime of all the bizarre colours. I don't know, like no one understood what the gimmick was initially when he showed up in the Studio Trigger video or when the actual toy was revealed. <laughs> that makes me go, I think it looks cool. 
It's just, it's a bizarre kind of deck where you would never see anywhere else. Uh, jeez, I've got to finicky this uh, little bumblebee is. He's not as uh, straightforward as uh, the newer ones are. Have you noticed that? And uh, if you can peel the entirety of him uh, back, you can shove in Chama here. Wouldn't it have been cool if he came off like a little tiny bass guitar or something? I think that would have been swag. Yeah, you can shove Chama in here. And because he has the transparent windows, which... I'm not sure if the original has, or they, they did that uh, especially for this version. You can shove Chama in there if this wee finicky man in his car mode shuts up. And you can see him kind of sit there. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's a little bit like that. Uh, hmm. Hold on. Okay, Titans Return Jank aside, uh, you can have him sitting there. It looks all cool. It's a nice wee kind of souvenir collab piece uh, if you want a tiny little... Uh, Japanese bassist and Bumblebee who looks like Sally from Cars, which, um, yeah, does what it says in the box, if you can read it, because, again, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> and, uh, well, sorry, just ignoring the elephant in the room. Studio Trigger doing a Transformers thing. I feel like that was a long time in the making. You know, you look at, uh, you know, top 10 Transformers references in Gridman or whatever that uh, one animation anime is called. You, you, you look at the panty and stock and stuff. All, all the stuff of the, the big bug-eyed girls, right? And you think, these guys really love their Transformers stuff. You know, they probably grew up with, like, the kind of... The, the funnier, kind of, like, uh, stylish uh, Japanese interpretation of, like, the dubs where, like, it's kind of silly. You know, and Beast Wars are all quirky and stuff. And you think, um, you know, these guys must be dying to do something like that. And I think it, it's cool that it's not, like, uh anything that can uh, the people on social media where they can uh, you know eternally hyping up transformers when it quite often is just okay or mediocre you know it, it was cool to see a high effort um like just a a promotional video a three minute music video not like a big crazy series because hasbro could never afford that who you can it was cool to just see a nice wee uh, tribute video where you get, you know, just all the animation, all the stuff they like to draw, all the stuff they like to animate. So I just realized that's clear plastic ball joints there. Uh, so I think my life flashed before my eyes there, just seeing that. Anyway, it's going to put you down for now because you're kind of giving me the heebie-jeebies. But yeah, um, it was very nice seeing just stuff like um, Overlord versus Animated Optimus Prime. That's crazy. That's the stuff you would only see when you have... Uh, you know, a pretty kind of ambitious animation team going crazy for something they love. Um, Waspinator flying from a battleship, all the helicopter guys. It just, it, I hate when people say this, right? But it's true. It felt like, you know, it was made by fans because, you know, fans who happen to also be animators, if that makes sense, which I suppose is what I am. But it's like, I mean, professional animators, people who are paid to do it consistently, people who are known for being animators, right? I respect that. I think, first and foremost, I want to say it's it's not as if, like, oh, it's just, you know, it, the reason why it's good is because the fans made it. I think fans can fuck things up off, and fans, you know, you can enjoy something without knowing 100% how it works. I don't know how music works. I could never play an instrument, but I very much enjoy it. You know, it's like that. I, I feel like um, the fact that they are animators first, and then fans, that's, um, that's what makes that good. It's not like just, um, you know, someone's fucking... YouTube stop motion series that like has a bumper chicken video attached to it. It's a professional studio making something cool and it benefits from the fact that these guys know what's up. They know animated stuff, they know, you know, Optimus Prime, fusing of Optimus Prime, I want to make the big season three guy. They know stuff like um even uh what's his face? Uh I think his name is actually Cancer. Cancer from Master Force killing a dog. That was that was crazy to see. Uh, and I, I, you know, it was it was nice, right? It didn't blow me away or anything. I feel like, um, like I mentioned that Pokemon promotional video earlier. It's one of those animations where it's like there's a little bit too much going on, and my eyes kind of glaze over because I'm like, what the, f you know, what what the fuck is happening again? So I slow down a bit. I I wish there was a little bit more time. I appreciate the visuals like that. Um, when they're animated, it, it, it was cool, right? You know, I'm rather cynical. You know how I am. But it, it's a music video at the end of the day. It's nothing crazy. I, I see people say they, they cried over the video. I think, you know, you, you shouldn't be that attached. But um, I come across uh, Josh Perez, um, you know, cool Transformers artist, uh, close friend of Derek J. Wyatt. 
and I see that he says, um, it would just be, you know, he, he knows it so well, just seeing Derek J. Wyatt, if he was here, if he could see his designs he worked so hard for, uh, animated by this prestigious anime studio with all these other characters uh, that he, you know, obviously had such a love for. That I feel like that 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 had me, you know, kind of shut up and set up. That that I, there's resonance in that, and um, I think that's why these kind of little um, like I was saying, these kind of little fan works. How the passion you can put into these projects it means something because yeah, there was no kind of like crazy financial incentive for fucking bump a check into partner up with Transformers and write a story for it. It's just. That guy went out of his way, Chama, uh, who I'm holding here right here, Chama went out of his way because he wanted to write a cool little funny story about uh, some characters who he likes very much. And I suppose he had the kind of creative and financial platform to do so. Not, not, not many of us do that. And I think it's nice to use your kind of, uh, just the kind of, the fortune you've had in life to make nice wee things like this. Make kind of things that no one else will. That makes your kind of life experience unique and means uh that 20 somethings can talk about it in the little obscure transformers review show you know that's nice uh and i suppose all of these big kind of creative things kicking off transformers one the, the tribute video even old stuff like the comic we were looking at there it gives you kind of creative retrospect uh from just all over the world as well you know different people of all different kind of walks of life reacting to this music video that was animated probably thousands of miles away from us all. And I think um, that gives some kind of creative retrospect, I believe. Something to just uh, sit down, you know, food for thought, shit like that. Uh, all from just a nice wee baby blue bumblebee toy who is, at the end of the day, just nice to look at with a kind of rare weird headmaster unit. And I think, you know what, that's worth my money. So I uh, thank you for enduring this uh, bi-weekly yap sesh that I have in the Keech TV Manager reviews. I hope you're doing well. I hope I said something that was at least kind of intrinsic or kind of cool, worth your time. On that, uh, I'm going to go play with this toy. See you later.